Okay, this is the October 16th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, tonight's meeting is being recorded by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later on by our residents and any other members of the public who want to watch our exciting meetings. Okay, first item on the agenda. Or who are having a hard time going to sleep. Yeah, this is yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely correct. Um, first item on the agenda is the minutes for Monday, October the 2nd. Any, um, any changes or additions? They look excellent. They look good. They do, they do. Thank you, Lisa, they're excellent. You're welcome. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for October 2nd. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $125,854, a payroll warrant for $106,107, a payroll deduction warrant for $27,653. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next item, meetings attended by select board members. So I go, okay, I, I'll get to go first. You go first. So, so, and some of these are going to be joint and you guys can contribute whatever. But uh, so two weeks ago, we had our all committees meeting. It was right after the last select board meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite meeting of the year, getting all, everyone together, all the volunteers of Conway. It's, it's wonderful hearing what everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, a few days after that, uh, the planning board had a marijuana meeting looking at the marijuana moratorium, uh, temporary moratorium. And, uh, and there was good discussion. There was a fair turnout. Uh, and I would say the real question at the end of that meeting was whether to have a pre-town meeting information meeting before the October 30th special town meeting. And, and I haven't heard what, what they're going to do. Um, I, I think the planning board was hoping that that would be the information meeting. And, uh, and I'm not, and it doesn't seem like there's enough going on to have another one, but there was, there was a good discussion at that meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple days after that, I met with Ron to talk about the dirt roads, an issue that came up in the, in the, in the, in the meeting two weeks ago. Uh, I just wanted to understand what the town's plan is for, for, for the road, for the dirt roads, and how they're being managed. And and, and I think Ron has a good plan, and uh, I am hoping it gets written up and and put on the website or put on his Facebook page so people can understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, a few days ago, a bunch of us went to Furcogs. 20th anniversary party representing Conway, uh, and uh, Furcog is a wonderful organization, and mm -hmm. they were they 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 put on a good po a dog and pony show for us. They did a mm -hmm. you did an excellent job, but they they did an excellent job summarizing the history, and uh, and then Saturday we were at the the MMA Selectman's Fall Association meeting, mm -hmm. and heard. Uh, you know, good legislative reports and uh, and what looked like good news, I'll say about the budget, and, and you may say more about that. Mm -hmm. So, that was, those are all. That's all I did. Robert. Well, I attended the same meeting as the other two did, the mm -hmm. committee meeting, and I went to the marijuana meeting, which I was quite a bit disappointed. There was not much return. There was five people total there. Mm -hmm. I thought there would be at least a dozen residents there. If Bob, Tom, and I weren't there, they probably wouldn't have been able to have a meeting. Yeah. So I was very disappointed. I had some good discussions and yeah. some good, good recommendations, but I thought it was very poorly attended. And uh, other than that, that's the only two I went to. Okay. Oh, this past week I was away, so probably didn't know that. But Did you catch any fish? I caught one you could carry him home in a bushel basket. All right. <laughs> okay. Actually in a pickup truck. Oh, well, there you go. Really? I'll show you some pictures after. Oh, good. Okay. Another fish story. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, um, we, obviously we were all at the um, 
all committees meeting, which which I thought went very well. Everybody presented their uh, their plans and what they've been doing. Um, I thought it was very well attended, and I think a lot of people got a good idea of what happens in committees, boards, commissions, so that uh, they can understand what happens in town with all our volunteers. Uh, last Tuesday, I was at the municipal Massachusetts Municipal Association Long Range Planning uh, meeting. Uh, that's a once a year meeting when all of the uh, uh, the board board members get together and talk about uh, the top priorities for the coming year for the MMA to focus on in terms of um, legislation. Things at the top of the list were Chapter 90 funding, getting it up to the $300 million mark rather than the $200 million mark it's at. Um, special, special education funding reimbursements, uh, charter school reimbursements, uh, school transportation reimbursement to more than 75%. Um, and a number of other items that uh, a lot of which we're, we're talking about more big city proposals. Uh, certainly uh, the ones that we were most interested in were the, the small town proposals. And uh, again, it set the agenda for MMA to, um, to press for legislation for this, for this next year. Um, went to the um, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association Fall Conference with uh, Bob on Saturday. Um, heard a lot of good information from the keynote speaker and uh, a couple of breakout sessions that we were at that were, uh, were very interesting. And uh, during that meeting we had a legislative update and it appears that the September uh, revenue from, from taxes for the state was very encouraging. It was up about $127 million, wow. so, uh, which, which was really good because uh, uh, they were expecting, they weren't expecting that kind of result. And certainly that uh, will keep them from perhaps dipping into uh, monies that uh, were meant for us. Uh, again, on Friday, I was at the, uh, the FERCOG 20th anniversary celebration, and that was well attended. FERCOG does some outstanding work for us and for the other towns in Franklin County. And uh, a lot of credit goes to Linda Dunleavy, the executive director, as well as the staff who at the FERCOG do an outstanding job. And certainly, uh, in connection with with uh, my work, I talked to a lot of um, regional planning agencies and uh, municipal officials, and they all have great things to say about the FERCOG. Uh, so that's good. And they're a model organization, and they service us. So that, that's outstanding. Okay, citizens' concerns. Do we have any citizens' concerns? Okay, um, last meeting we had a couple of citizens' concerns. Um, Brian Kosmeskis and Jody McIntyre came in to talk about roads. Um, since then, I have traveled the gravel roads, particularly um, Boyden Road and Graves Road. And I, to, my, to my way of, of looking at this, I, I think the roads are in, in fine shape in terms of the gravel roads. Uh, I didn't see anything about either Graves or Boyden that I would think would be uh, a detriment to either walkers or, or animals walking around. Uh, and I was paid particular attention, I was paying particular attention to the areas of the road that um, had the, uh, the ground up uh, asphalt sections that seemed, seemed to be fine in terms of the uh, size of the, the aggregate as well as uh, the compounding of the aggregate in those sections. Um, I'd like to make a comment about that too. Sure. Because I traveled over them after that meeting also. 
And I didn't at that point I didn't see anything wrong with them other than a couple of spots there was a little more rock and a couple of spots for crushed rock, small mm -hmm. rock. Then I think Ron could take care of those areas and sweep by sprinkling some gravel over them. But what I think I, I'm not sure, but what I think might have took place is Ron uh, the, the rock was picked up, the big piece of rock was picked up right after they laid this this stuff down the very first day. Okay. Where Ron didn't have time to get back over to uh, regrind him or or pound him in with a with a roller or whatever he has to do to get him into the service of the road, and I think that's when Brian picked him up. Could be. So I, I can't prove that, but I mean that's what I think took place. I think it was immediately after they did a job when he found this and and and, and bought them in the shores. Um, the, the, the because work. I understand the very next day after our meeting, Ron was right down there working the next morning. From what I was told. The, and, the, uh, there were a couple of sections of, of both Graves and Boyden where in the center of the road there was some more uh, larger pieces that weren't uh, basically uh, um, rolled mm -hmm. by, by the, the, the tires there in the center of the road. But aside from that, I, I really thought that the roads were in, in pretty good shape. One, one thing that I end up wondering, and it seems like Ron does some things that take a number of days. He, yes. he puts material down, and then he yeah. comes back the next day and rakes it, and then he comes back and he rolls it. See, and well, maybe we should have a sign or put put up some signs on the side of the road that would say "work in progress." Or when you know, I when I was a superintendent, I always made sure this is just me because I'm ain't all about ain't all about things. I always made sure that when we worked on the road, we put gravel down or we graded what we did. That before that nightfall, that same night, we York raked it. We at least got the stone off the edge of the, off the road into the ditch line. We could pick them up the next day. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably didn't take place, and that's it probably where he picked them up. Okay. Um, my next item of business um, we're going to table the joint meeting with the Board of Assessors because they have not heard back from the Department <coughs> of Energy. of. Uh, uh, revenue concerning um, the final uh, approval for the tax classification. So we'll, we'll uh, table that until our next meeting. Is, is that going to continue um, to delay getting taxes? Yes. Yes. yes that's that's we, have, we haven't set the tax rate yet. Yeah. And, and we're waiting to do that. Um, there's a good chance it will be done by Thursday. The assessors are meeting Thursday at 5. Lee has suggested the select board coming over at 530 for the classification hearing. Is that possible? Why don't you send us an email when you know for sure? I'm, I could be available. Well, I have, I have to post it, so. I've got a FERCON council meeting that I've got to run that night. Okay, well, if there are there two, two there, mm -hmm. we can do it. Yeah. it. It would be a help to Jan and Lynn to uh, if get we it can, done. Then we'll soon. do it. 13.5 looks fine to me. Okay. Okay. It, it, it's a simple hearing. We're going to do a single tax but rate. Let us know have. one way yeah. or the other, please. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yes, it's a go, or no, it's not a go. Right. I just have to post it. That's all. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as long as I what can time post did you say it, Thursday, 5? Uh, 5.30. They'll be meeting at 5. Yeah. They have a little introductory. But it might be delayed again. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. Um, we could have heard back this afternoon. We mm -hmm. did. So chances are that we'll hear back by Thursday afternoon. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is the special town meeting coming up on October 30th. Um, we uh, have, John, I have to say, Beth has asked to go early if she, she can. Has. Okay. If I can. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, do you mind if we take Beth first? It's fine. Well, it's, Thanks, is it going to be short and sweet? Short. Yes. Short and sweet. Very short. You you me. I'm concise. <laughs> All right, Beth, you're on. Okay, so I'm here. I just thought it was, was a good time for me to um, check in with you guys since I'm representing the town on the Mohawk Trail with the partnership project. And we just had um, a meeting uh, last week, or the week before, I can't remember, the week before. Um, and uh, they also had a legislative hearing last Tuesday um, on the bill. And you might have seen the article in the... Perhaps you could mention what the bill is. I mean, we have to start from... Oh, what the bill is. Well, the bill is is to um, fund the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Project. Mm -hmm. Some $6 million thing that from the state. 
Um, and this is just, this, this project's been in process for a few years. I think the previous person who was representing Common was Jim, mm -hmm. um, Jim, Jim Moore. Jim Moore. Yeah. Um, so it's been in process. Not much has happened. Uh, and now I think something might happen, but it's still very dependent on a few things. One is, is the state going to fund it? We still don't know. Um, is the Forest Service interested, is the federal government interested in funding this? Because the big bulk of this money is actually anticipated money. to be federal, to the tune of like $24 million. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very unclear to me that's going to happen. Um, I've been to three meetings. Every meeting, there's been a representative from the U.S. Forest Service who comes down from Maine, and um, up until the last time, there wasn't even, you know, the, the U.S. Forest Service was changing chiefs. So the new chief is a guy from the southeast region. He's just starting, and he hasn't been brought up to speed on this possible project. So it's all very nebulous on the federal level, in my opinion. Um, I, I sent Tom this thing about the, this frequently asked questions that came from Franklin mm -hmm. Land Trust, and it's, it's, it's mostly pretty accurate. So it just goes over the same things, which is, you know, um, but this is very much from their point of view, which is that it's a conservation effort um, and sustainable forestry management effort mm -hmm. rather than a... Um, um, an economic and uh, woodland uh, products and things like that effort. Depends on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still a very, it's a project that has a lot of uh, space in it for something to happen. It's unclear to me where it's actually going right I, now. I think the land trust's interests are in conservation, so they those totally are the aspects are. of it that they stress in their so, uh, presentation of the project. Um, the, the, the reporter had an article very opposed to it. The re reporter had an article that talked about the um, people who came to the legislative hearing opposing the bill. Mm -hmm. And they, in my opinion, they have some legitimate concerns. They're very focused on the, their biggest concern is that there's going to be a wood pellet manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's going to happen at all. For a variety I, of reasons, it's not actually. It's not even in the plan. Cost effective. As far as it, I know. It's mentioned in the plan. As a possibility. It's mentioned in the plan. As a yeah. possibility. An example. I don't of think the kind that's. Of thing. I don't think that's going to happen. That's not. But, but that's not the major our, focus of this whole thing, anyway. No, yeah. it's really not. Um, so there's a lot of different angles to this. Um, I'm I'm happy to keep representing the town. My, my one concern right now is I don't understand, I don't know how uh, large landowners in town would feel about this. Well, I've talked to a few landowners uh -huh. since the was hit the paper. And uh -huh. Some of them are pretty good acreage owned people. And they're quite concerned that they may would lose their rights as to what they could do with their farmland or their woodland. And they're very concerned about that. So I, you got a battle ahead of you. I don't. Well, I'm. I'm. I don't even know how I feel about this project, actually. So they just um, don't want to have to have any restrictions on their own land. Well, they're, they're paying the tax bills on. There wouldn't be any restrictions on their land because it's going to remain in private ownership. And mm -hmm. and even it, if this bill passes through the state, we'd have to. You all would have to. We'd have to decide if it's going to. If we're going to opt in as mm -hmm. a town. Even though you signed the letter saying, sure, we'd have to opt in. And then private landowners would have to opt in themselves. Um, I think there's a couple of things that I have concerns about. One is possible local taxation consequences if people do go for the conservation restriction buyouts. Yep. We would lose money. I think, we would lo I think it's possible we would lose money. Yeah. Um, um, my own... Um, then I have a concern about this is funding for the first five years of the project, which is uh, some administrative costs, and they want to build a forestry center, which they also think would be a tourism center. No one knows where that would go. Um, but that's only funded for the first five years of the project, and then it has to raise its own income, and I don't, and I don't understand where that would come from either. So I think people, <laughs> I think, I think yeah. municipalities might have increased costs that they're not aware of. And then um, I'm not sure what this project adds on that the state forestry department, in concert with the Department of Ag, already doesn't do for landowners. I'm mm -hmm. not sure yet. 
And then my own personal worry is that it would open the door to really large-scale industrialized logging, like the kind that you can see in other parts of the country um, that hasn't happened here yet, because we don't have a lot of mm -hmm. big, chunks, big right. chunks of land. But if you put them all together, it's possible that you could bring in industrial logging. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, that's my own concern. So that's where I'm at with it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy okay. to keep going. Well, it sounds like you're on neutral ground, and I think that's a good thing. I'm neutral. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, that's a like, good thing. I'm waiting to hear what would be so great about it. Mm -hmm. I, as I own like a very tiny parcel of forest, like 20 acres, so I participate in Franklin Land Trust mm -hmm. workshops on management and mm -hmm. habitat and things like that. But um, and we heat with wood. We cut all our own wood off our land, and. Um, so I've participated in some of these sustainable management, you know, workshops and things, and I, I don't, it's hard for me to see how it would be any different, but I could be missing something. Mm -hmm. um, I have some appointments with some of the other people on the committee to find out from them, like the Shelburne people, just to see uh, people who've been participating. Are, are there some towns that are strongly supporting it? I, hmm? You know, I don't think that anybody's not... I get a sense of sort of like hesitation on certain certain well, towns. I think, I think the North Quabbin region was was most interested in it because they had their own North Quabbin initiative that this would oh, okay. be uh, folded into. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And how about the legislators? Do you know how they were well, how Steve, receptive? They were. Steve Kulik's a big supporter. You know the person who initially filed the bill. Um, she died unexpectedly, that woman mm. from... Gail Caridi. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So everybody was excited about that. But um, I think her predecessor, and, and Adam Hines, the guy from Pittsfield, he's a co-sponsor. So mm -hmm. all our legislators are, you know, on board with it. I mm -hmm. think because they think it has the potential to bring tourism and recreational stuff to the region as well as some additional business. Mm -hmm. We heard presentations a few times ago about a couple of possible things. One is the carbon um, market, incredibly complicated, really hard for individual landowners to get involved in. It's just unbelievably like the world's biggest math problem. It's, it's crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a possibility. And then there was this very cool presentation about um, engineered timber, so you can do you can do, st like the way, um, there's a building at the UMass campus, it's this big giant design building right. that's now built yes. out of engineered yeah. timbers, very yeah. strong, it's very mm -hmm. nifty, And uh, but there's no plants in the New England area that make this. Right. So yeah. we got kind of excited about this as an idea, because you can use lower grade lumber mm -hmm. for it, and um, the closest plant is in Quebec. So. It, which, as you might know, Quebec, you know, Canada really has an edge on American uh, timber mm -hmm. products. So that seemed like a really good possibility. I, I watched that um, building at UMass go up. Yeah. And I couldn't believe <coughs> yeah. that it was being made of wood. Yeah, mm. it's huge. Yeah, I don't it's know, huge. You know, it's uh, very beautiful. It's very exciting. It's probably wood from the U.S. that went to Canada, got processed, and was brought back to the project. Yes, mm. probably so. And so that was the one thing that I think everybody in the room could get <laughs> yeah. sort of behind the idea of this. Not with pellet plants. You would be shocked if you knew how much wood come, goes out of the town of Conley to Canada. Mm. No, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I know. It's a lot. It's mm. really a lot. Yeah. So it would be nice to keep it more local. But that's just to be sawn into boards. Yeah. I mean, sure. not, not complicated right. Right. engineering. Right. Right. The, the general theory wow. is that we have a lot of natural resources, but we don't do the value added, the manufacturing mm -hmm. here, and that robs us of a really good economic base. Sure. Yeah. So that's so part of it. That. I, I wonder what the, the fire retardant rating is on some of that engineered wood. Well, they talked about that. They said it was pretty high. Really? Yeah. It might be sprayed. It's probably sprayed on the outside. I don't retardant. know. I hope so. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's, Anything to be. Uh, what building? You know the name of the building? <sighs> it's right it's on the, the south side of the campus, right across on the, the left Newman side. Center. Right, yeah, uh, right across from the yeah, right, okay. right across from the Newman Center. It, it's yeah. the design, uh, design something building. Yeah, 
yeah, design sciences, design arts. So that's about all I have to say right now. Great. Good. I'll Thank you, Beth. Keep Appreciate you on. your coming in. I'll keep us informed. Keep funny. Look for the funny shoot. Okay. I'll keep you uninformed. Great. If anything major happens, for sure I'll let you guys know. But Great. I'll keep going. Great. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks, Roy, for letting me go first. Roy, Roy. Bye. come on up, Roy. Bye. Bye. Hey, Jan. Hi. Almost. Yeah. Have a seat. Have a seat in the big seat. All right. Okay, Roy. We're here to discuss the um, articles that the Finance Committee is interested in on the warrants. So what is the Finance Committee interested in? Well, it's, How about it's Article funny. 2? <laughs> No, uh, well, I, yeah, flip, yeah, at the bottom two. of the first page. Oh, oh, first page. I thought I was just here to discuss Article 7. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Give him an update. You're not going to write that easy. Recommendations. <laughs> yeah, but my, uh, I know what they are. I, I know, but my, my, uh, my do you, do you, minutes, did the, did the finance, did that. the finance committee make recommendations on the rec rest yeah. of these articles? Yes, yeah. we did. But I, okay. Well, just tell us from there. That's how we get. Yeah, we don't need to go into great detail. Yeah. Okay. So Article Two. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no no problem. Okay. So that was what a, a five to one or a yeah, five, no, five, five to zero. Five, five to, to zero. zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that was for the. Uh, Fire, fire, fire truck. truck. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Article Three. What? Let me just see if I can get it. Which one was that? The matching six thousand dollars matching funds. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Just bear with me a second. If I can get yeah. my my email on here. They they were all five to zero except the last one. One, one was not the last one. It, okay. So you you know this. Yeah. Yeah. So no, the last one before the controversial one. So no. three was five to zero? No, we're talking about the, the uh, tree was five to zero. No, no, no wait, six. tree? Wait, we're talking about the six thousand. Six thousand matching funds. Yeah, five, yeah th five that to was zero. five to zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, tree work at the four, school. That was five to zero. Um, um, kind and tree work. And I will oh I have something to add during my during Bill, my, bills from prior years. That one, one I think was uh, four and one abstention. Is that, that's the one I think, not, right? That's why I want to go check the minutes. For zero and one? Hang, hang on. An abstention? You had, actually had an abstention? Yeah, an abstention. An abstention? Yes. Yes. Just, just that was a Four bills were prayer year, $827. Eight hundred bucks. Hey, hang on. Now, hang that, on. that was, I think that was five to zero. The next one was, um, was uh, the abstention. The revolving fund? Yeah. I got the minutes. Yeah, the, the last one, before the the membership was was not unanimous. Okay. There was one abstention. So there's one attachment. There it is. Well, we had good IT around here, Roy. Really. Hmm? <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Okay. Um. Unless it was from the prior year. year. So was bills from the prior, prior year, four to one. Oh, well, one that was the four to one. Oh, four four, four, four zero to one? Good, yeah. Yes. Four. All right. Uh, no. Was four. One against? Four to zero to one. It was one abstention. One abstention. One abstention. Yeah. Right. And that's five to zero. Okay. So six was five zero. And then we have article seven. Okay. Okay. Which I don't think there was ever a formal vote taken on that. No, there wasn't when I was there. There wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Right. What's the, what's the feeling, the uh, leaning of the committee? Well, if we go back to the first thing you said when you, when I thought we were just talking about uh, Article 7, um, I mean, the committee, this article kind of was a surprise. And um, I think the committee, well, after, uh, the committee didn't really understand the background for, for the article. You didn't propose this article to us? No. Oh. 
He was Tom, Tom okay. proposed. Yeah, and I know he did well, it you, in the you, interest. You guys of, are having trouble getting members of right? efficiency. I don't yeah. think we're having. It's not a matter of having trouble getting. Look, we had one member was ill last year for the whole period, and that individual still. Uh, was, they're well now, and they want to continue on the committee because I asked that individual outright if they could continue and whatnot. So that individual is uh, is continuing. Um, I think that there was uh, yeah. So we were we really we wanted some some. Uh, and then we, we sort of we went into a, a closed session because we had names that we were kicking around for um, you know as possible because uh, there's one there's one vacancy. I so think. so yeah. you have five members now. We have five members now. Yes. Okay. And um, that's and, that's and that's really the and the, so the the, the, the questions is, were. Um, staying at six, somebody, I, I think you, you mentioned, well, you know, seven would seven. be better for more yeah. perspectives. Yes. So that would feel really there were a few times last year that we met you, would you need every hand that had a quorum? Couldn't get a quorum. Well, this, get this, a quorum. Well, this was That's why we, we asked Tom to do what we did. And, and this is the main thing that I'm here is to, to bring back to the committee exactly what the concerns of the select board are, mm -hmm. and, um, and so we can take them into account when we sort of now, ultimately, it's the town, you know, the town meeting that will. But you have five members this. now, but not six, correct? We have five members now. Yes. You see, I think that there's, um, the, I think, possibly more than anybody uh, really uh, uh, appreciates. The, the committee tends towards a very, towards a conservatism, and in our mind, having a tie, having a three-three tie is not necessarily a bad thing because it shows that we're really divided on this thing. And, you know, it's, it's, it may not be an immediate path forward. Maybe it means that it needs to be discussed, talked about, or whatever, and before we can, you know, we, we could make a recommendation. Or I don't think it's a bad thing for the town to see that that's the case either. However, I do understand that it's in the... Uh, in, in the need for efficiency, and you can't take forever on these things, you want to get a decision, right. that it's mm -hmm. uh, it's not a bad thing to have an odd number on the committee, that's for sure. And certainly the, the Finance Committee does a lot of important work, and there's a lot of work involved in it. Um, I, I don't know a lot of people who are all that anxious to serve on the Finance Committee. Well, that's... That has been true historically in the past. However, I think it's less true now than perhaps in the past. I think that um, I think there are individuals out there that would, you know, if if they you have a every year you have a turnover. Uh, well, what it costs. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we have some long look. We have a turn of one or two, yes. You're one of the longest ones. Yes, but and, and that's good and bad. That's not a great thing either. And believe me, I've thought that maybe it's time to, to to move on and get some fresh points of view in the committee. Um, but we have uh, myself, we have Bob Stone, who's been on there for quite a while, um, and who else? Uh, Tom Donovan is... Uh, He's been on and off. Yeah. Jim Bosman. Yeah. He's gone. So Jim left. He's gone, but, but he was on for a long time. He was yeah. on for a yeah. long time. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a core that's stable. Um, I, and, and if you're hearing, there is ambivalence on my, on my part about this article. I'm ambivalent about it. Um, uh, if I tend to anything, I wish we had more public part. I wish we had more public come to our meetings, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Sure. Anybody watching out there? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you want me to bring back to the committee? That's, that's I guess, my, my question well, for you. Well, you know, we, we put this up there because uh, we felt there was a, a problem with the Finance Committee getting members. Right now, you don't have a sixth member, and you haven't had a sixth member for a while. Well, no, Jim resigned how long? Was six, he the sixth member? Six weeks ago he resigned, yeah. roughly. Yeah. 
Seven weeks ago. So, so he was the, the sixth member? He was the sixth member. So who well, else? One, of the, one of the members got, was out uh, ill for yeah. years. Annie uh, Bowden yeah. uh, is, is on now. She's new. Oh, yeah. And, and she, she's the newest. Yes. Okay. But, she, but that's not six, right? She's just. No, she's five. She's five. She's yeah. five. Yeah. Um, so I don't see an, an advantage of six, six and going to five only because it doesn't change the quorum at all. It uh, does change. It does change. Yes, it does. Sure it does. From, three, from four to three. three. Four to three. Down to three. And also, the quorum is the majority, has to be majority, majority, majority of the members. I mean, more than half. That's right. the majority. I, I think. Yeah. And it does make it easier to have one or two people phone in as long as we have that quorum here. That's right. Yeah. And so, um, I, I do appreciate that. And. Um, we just felt it make you, it'd kind of make your job easier. Your job's easier. Okay. I'll, I will report that back. Don't you think so? A absolutely. Sure. And it lowers, it lowers your number for a quorum, which is important, you know. Nothing worse to hold a meeting. You can't come up with a, a vote at the end. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly? If we had five, and I had greater participation from the public, that would be fine with me. That would be absolutely fine with me. Yeah, but greater participation from the public doesn't, doesn't, doesn't solve the problem. the problem. No, but well, I say if we had five, because we'd have the public talking to us yeah. and sh enlightening us as to their issues and concerns. So what you're concerned, you're saying, is your members don't have enough advice from the townspeople as to how they should vote. It would help. It would help. And you may have those concerns sometimes yourselves. I, I don't think many members of the public actually know the finances of the town to be able to give you no, but it's enough not, but good it's, input. But they can be asking questions like, why? You know, why is this and why is that? And in the course of a, of a conversation, maybe we would, we would learn something. And that's really where I'm, where I'm coming from. But, but you're expressing something I, that all of the committees feel. Right? I that, guess so. Yeah, sure. I guess yeah. so. But the finance committee is particularly, hey, look, in the end, you guys have the, the ultimate say as to sort of what is on the warrant. And yes, we're listed. Um, do the, does the town meeting care how we feel? Many times we feel like the town meeting doesn't. Um, mm. And again, that's maybe part of of trying to make it less insular, I guess is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I'm, per personally, I like to see it go to seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have trouble getting six, but you wanted to go to seven. No, it's not. No. It, no. I, I don't. Uh, yes. Okay. So yeah. let's leave it. Look, I, 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 you know, see, if, your if I see your point. If there's significant opposition from the finance committee <clears throat> on this Warren article, they can bring it up on town town right. meeting floor. And, and, and we will. Right. Okay. But okay. the other, so the other, there was a part of why the committee wanted somebody to be here <coughs> because we wanted to hear perhaps anything directly from the select board as to any, so anything we could be doing better to help the process. And so you should feel free. To, and I, I'll just... That's what we felt, that by one less number, you could okay. get that could, vote. Could get it it so the point is, for timeliness, are right. we holding right. things up by... Sometimes. Last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Okay. That's right. yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. That, that's our whole okay. purpose, is to make it easier yeah. for the Finance Committee to do their work. Okay. Okay. And um, are there are there any deadlines besides the normal ones? Anything that's out there that I should know about? You know, that we will not. That's not. out of out of scope, out of the normal schedule or time schedule. No. No. We don't know yet, do we? Whether we're going to have free cash certified for the meeting, do we? Uh, I believe it's going to be certified this week. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, usually we had it certified early last year, didn't we? we yes. I don't know what we're doing last year. Get the special well, we, come in when money hasn't yeah. been certified. Right. You can't vote to spend it. Well, right. 
so I hope it's there. But that's not your problem. That's not your problem. <laughs> We're just hoping everything lines up. Yeah. Wait, it's going to line up. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Uh, boy. Please express right. our thanks right. so, right. to the okay. Finance right. Committee for all the work so that you, you do. But so you guys will come to the special town meeting prepared to say, we oppose this or we support this? First of all, I don't know how many of us are going to, I mean, I will be there. Uh, okay. And uh, probably Alan will be there, I, I imagine. Yeah. So you don't think uh, you'll have a no, quorum there? Right. We'll have a quorum for a vote. No, Annie, I think, will be there. You're okay. supposed to be yeah. sitting up front at the table, giving, yeah. making your recommendations yeah. right. on all the I, articles. Right. I, I, I think at the, at the town meeting this year, I think you only, you only had two people there. As a town I was out of town. Oh, you, uh, that's because you were. And I was inadvertently out of town. Inadvertently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, it, I was. I, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't thrilled about it. Yeah. Um, I know. I know. So I, I think it's a very good point. And I think that um, I will try and make that point okay. better. How's good. that? Great. Appreciate it. Great. All right. Thank you, Roy. Oh, thank thank you. you, Roy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Jan, as, you, as long as you're here, please come up. Okay, thank you. So before I start, I have a question. This is, this is uh, for us to consider a request from the treasurer collected to authorize short-term borrowing. From general stabilization. Okay. Um, so was there any hearing this evening? No, tax. no, there wasn't because we haven't heard from DOR, which, yeah. which was supposed to speak to us this afternoon. So we've uh, we're tentatively meeting Thursday with the assessors at 5:30 for the hearing. Yes. Okay. So that might not happen either if we don't get rid of the state. So we're continuing the hearing to okay. Thursday. Okay. So I'm preparing for about another month without uh, any significant revenue. Okay. And um, I've, I've made up a summary of my cash. Um, this is the fiscal year to date, and it covers right up through today's warrant. So on July 1st, we had an opening balance, and this, this does not include any special funds. This is just my um, operating. operating cash. Yeah. Of a million five hundred twenty-five thousand fifty-three dollars and four cents, okay. and um, with revenue of nine hundred eighty-three thousand one hundred and sixty-three dollars and sixty-one cents, and disbursements uh, at that big number of two million three hundred and forty-four mm -hmm. thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-two cents. So, without any uh, significant revenue, that that expense is hurting us. Mm -hmm. So my uh, ending balance of uh, expendable cash is $121,765. To last from now until? I, I'm preparing for a month, a right? So or if we more. get our bills out in two weeks, I start getting some uh, right. revenue two weeks after that. So What's your average um, monthly cost? You know, that's a really difficult number to, to put a finger on. It varies yeah. so much year to year, but um, it's about uh, 400000 a month. a month. Yeah, just take our budget and divide it by 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and well, then you have the revenue that is, you know, it's unpredictable as to when it comes in. The good news sure. is I did get the Chapter 90 money in, so that helped. That's not holding us back okay. any. Okay. But what I'm asking for is uh, 400000 from the general stabilization, and I should be able to return it uh, within, by December 1st, I put. How much in general Probably much sooner. About a million, isn't it, in general stabilization? Uh, in, in just general, it's 431973 So you're looking for a 60-day loan, basically? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And there's, you know, we also have the capital stabil many stabilization accounts, so... Um, yeah. Okay. So this is a document that I need to um, have signed and send off to the DOR, if you agree does, with does that. Does the town ever ask people to send in money early? Or, well... I mean, we all know what our... We don't know what our what the taxes are. I know. And, and, so you, what I know you can they were do last is year. preliminary tax bills. Uh -huh. So we're not allowed to collect taxes before um, they're committed. That's what I'm wondering. So I can't can't do that. Uh -huh. We could move to a preliminary tax billing system, which means that we would estimate what what it is based on last year's taxes and bill, and then your second half payment is the balance. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. that's okay, but it, it has its own set of issues. People come to expect it being two equal halves. 
And so far, we haven't really had issue. And because our stabilization money is there, this is really easy, no interest. Yeah. You okay. know, it's a, it's a no-brainer, really. Do you have any idea what percentage of people have their taxes put in escrow accounts? Hmm. I would have to just throw a number off the top okay. of my head. I just want it. And I would say it's probably about uh, 75 to 80%. So they have to present a bill to get it out of their, their account. They do. Mm -hmm. no. so. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jan, the initials here, your set of initials, and who are the other set of initials? The accountant, Stacy. The accountant. Musa. Okay. Yeah. So you both checked these numbers. Yes. Okay. And you think four hundred thousand is is uh, adequate? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that on the recommendation of the treasurer collector, that we um, um, approve the advancement uh, or the. Uh, uh, the taking out of general stabilization four hundred thousand dollars to cover shortfalls because of a delay in tax bills going out. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And I believe I need uh, at least two signatures on that. Right. Every, everybody signed. We all voted, so we will yeah. sign it. You can move that sticker if need be. No, he can vote without me. Yeah. You cut them off. Okay. Can't blame John on that one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Good Yep. You too. All right. Next item on the agenda on the agenda is appointments to the cultural council. Um, I assume we got recommendations, Tom, from the cult cultural yep. council on. Uh, Michelle Sanger and uh, Danielle Thompson? Yes, these were both recommended by the uh, Cultural Council. They will be filling seats uh, three-year terms, so this will be an appointment to June 30th, 2020. Okay. Any, any questions on either one of these recommendations? Great. No? Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, approve the appointment of uh, Michelle Sanger and uh, Danielle Thompson uh, to the Conway Cultural Council for a term ending June 30th, uh, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to consider joining communities forming the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. I have some information on that. Okay. Uh, you do have a preliminary packet. Right. And uh, the communication to us came from the town of Deerfield, which has uh, been at the forefront of this effort. There are a number of towns in uh, both the upper and lower Pioneer Valley that are interested in this and uh, we will have uh, a representative from Deerfield at our October 30th meeting uh, to give you a little more information. Things I learned in a preliminary phone call were that um, the initial uh, the, it, it, it does look as though it, it costs you know four or six thousand dollars to join this thing. Um, they have um, a, a small grant, and they're hoping for I believe a larger grant that would pay at least for the first year of that. And uh, the the main part of the program is to monitor mosquito levels and disease levels and provide a remedy uh, which centers on uh, on storm drains or uh, you know catch basins where they put a, a, a larvicide in the bottom of that in all the bottoms of our catch basins and that's supposed to substantially decrease the mosquito population. Um, Oh, the larvicide, huh? Yeah. Hmm. There's going to be a a meeting of the of the agency that's that's running this program this week, and more information will be forthcoming that we don't even have available now. So 
uh, it probably makes sense to, to wait, a little, wait a little bit on that either. Yeah, uh, at, the, well. at the uh, Franklin County Selectmen's Association that Bob and I were at, um, Carolyn gave a, a short presentation on, on this situation. Um, I'm not sure how relevant it is to us at this point in time, but I'd really like to hear more from uh, from the Deerfield rep that will be here on the 30th. That will probably be Carolyn. My, yeah, probably. my take on that too, Tom, is uh, uh, years ago we had scale when I was high with mm. and the county boards of health got together and decided to do the larger side uh, abatement program and stuff like that. And they came around our town and said, Conway's government, a handful, of, not more than a handful of chest patients. Mm -hmm. Not like Greenfield and all the other towns, they got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. So they came around, we counted them, and they gave give me a little tiny bottle with just a few tablets in it, because that's all Conway had, and we threw them in the chest patients. So, uh, that's uh, I, that's be, my understanding of what the program is. To be evenly distributed and, uh, amongst all, uh, rating us for the same amount of money as it looks like for other than, I mean, I want to hear more, but yeah. to pay the same as a deer feeling and grief for them paying, I think we're, we're sadly mistaken. Well, it's in, uh, it's in Deerfield's interest, of course, they were a contiguous town. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're trying to have as large a district as possible so that the influence is as widespread as possible. Because when they brought these boards of health originally thought, well, you know, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll handle stagnant bodies of water and, and catch basins and stuff like that. Well, when they got checking into it, they, the theory was, you know, uh, they're going to go to like a, like that pond down in 116 and it's just over the top of the hill and it's stagnant. You're going to throw something out. Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. No. Oh. So that covered 90% of the yeah. Problem for Conway. Yeah. I imagine the pills that you put in are probably BT, that bacillus, turgensis. You have to wear gloves and take them out of the thing. Uh, it's very benign. You're like, a, like an Arkansas <laughs> attack. Oh, they're right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So. All right. Well, I, I, I would suggest that we wait to uh, the next meeting and get more information on this. Yep. Is, okay. that, is that everybody's uh, feeling? All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is a uh, written agreement for utility payments at uh, 41 Asheville Road in return for meeting space. Tom, what is that? Yeah, I, I brought that up because it came up amongst the staff that uh, not everyone was aware that the town actually pays the utilities for the, uh, for the Firemen's Association. Uh, oh, this is the Firemen's Association? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, I have sent off a letter to uh, Chris Herman and uh, I'm blanking on the second Ron person. Hawks. Ron Hawks. He's a trigger. Um, and have <coughs> not heard back from them, but um, my thought was that if, if people were, were noticing that the town is paying the bills mm -hmm. of a non-town entity, that it's probably best to have a written agreement that we can point to saying, yes, this is all, you know, um, public the arrangements and things like that, so. Um, pro probably best to have a, a formal agreement saying saying that we will pay the utilities um, for them providing meeting space. Okay. Right. And, and It's a meeting and training space. For meeting and, and training, yes, I did include that. Meeting and training space for so, uh, that, that, that was That was my thought, and I've, I've, I've thrown some things down on paper. I haven't gone terribly far with it because I wanted to hear your, your thoughts on it. But my, my feeling was that if, if some people notice it and mention it, and, and it, would, it would just be, be best to have it, you know, right so there. In, we're in we're just formalizing what we've already been yeah. doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. yeah. Uh -huh. And I have not heard back from them on that. I, 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 I certainly don't intend for it to be anything, you know, um, other than, than uh, supportive uh, and, and appreciative. Right. Okay. Good. All right, so we'll hear more about that. Okay, uh, Tom, any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting? I do not have any. Okay. Uh, your update, Tom? I do have an update. I 
one one thing to add in the departments right up top. Um, uh, under committee news, in case this information didn't come up under the finance committee agenda item, which it did not, the finance committee has elected Alan Singer their chair. Roy Cohen is continuing as the representative to the capital improvements planning committee. Mm -hmm. And Bob Stone is continuing as representative to the personnel committee. The Finance Committee also approved matching money for the hazard mitigation grant that uh, the select board had signed um, with the condition that they approved that. So I was able to get that signed commitment to Kimberly McPhee at the fur code in time for the submittal deadline. Good. Okay. Um, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee is slated to meet Wednesday night. I, once again, hope to have the final version of the long-term financial plan by then, but we'll present what I have in draft form if the final version is not available. In departmental news, first, you may have noticed the warrants for the October 30th special town meeting were mailed. You should all have mm -hmm. gotten those. Yep. Uh, regarding a question about the cost of repairing the grader, it was substantially less than expected. expected. A second repair shop discovered that the slippage problem was electrical rather than directly related to the transmission. Good. Great. We saved a lot of money on that. That'll come back as free cash next year. Okay. Uh, the front of the, lucked out there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't often. But yeah. Uh, the front of the Fournier property is being cleared of tornado damaged trees. Thanks to quick action by our highway supervisor, the contractor has agreed to take down three ash trees we had identified as problematic near the school at no additional cost. Okay. So we may be able to pass over that article at town meeting. Uh, may I ask a question about that? Uh, they're, are they, what are they, they're chipping up all the stuff that Ron had taken down in his stockpile? Is that what they're doing? That's part of it. Then they're also taking down all the trees that... Out back? Yeah. Okay. Well, in the, well, in the front part of the property. Out, once we take care of that, we'll file an amendment to the right. cutting plan for the back part, which will be much more problematic. And everything can't ground in the chip. Yeah. Um, Who's doing the work? The Panama? I'm sorry? Panama? It may be. Um, I have no idea. I know we contacted them. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's the, the one who ended up doing it, though. Do mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have a I, contract with them? Um, no, it's it's not that expensive in terms of, well, because they're keeping the chips. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're selling uh, chips. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, I am working with the, the town clerk and the administrative assessor to update addresses for the local update of census addresses, which is the first step for the federal government in creating its baseline for the next 10-year census. The forms are horrific. But I think that the work is going to be reasonable. <laughs> How much work could there be in this? Most of the work will be in filling out the forms. <laughs> not, not in, not in How, How many addresses have actually changed done. since the last census? Um, there are a number, mostly in the in the southeast uh, part of town. But n new addresses um, changed. There are various changes. Of There's probably more you take in a ten-year period. Any property changes got to be changed? Uh, we're, we'll find out. But the... Uh, Lee's been really, really good about keeping up. And really, in the I has been really good about keeping up on, at least in the dispatch maps that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, good, uh, good. Very good about, we open it up and all of a sudden there'll be a name crossed out and there'll be a new name in it. So as soon as they find out a new name, somebody's taking care of it. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, we are still moving forward on the FEMA grant for Delabar Avenue. Um, it is technically submitted by MEMA to FEMA, but the submission website has been problematic. Although MEMA's internal deadline was today, we've been working on a temporary solution that should solve the problem. 
over the next day or two. Okay. Uh, the members of the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust met last week and brought down the deductible for referrals to specialists. No, that, the, was an, that was another meeting I was at last week. For the oh. new plan. I heard you were there. I was there, yeah. I'm going to so many meetings, I'm forgetting <laughs> I'm going to so many yeah. meetings. Yeah, okay. uh, we're still trying to get information from the Group Insurance Trust about the health insurance landscape to have a solid case to make to our employees that this continues to be the best plan around. Uh, due diligence requires that we have uh, more information. There will be a defined timeline and detailed process for decision making once we decide to move forward, which we'll have to do by the end of the year. And we'll probably be starting that pretty soon because some of these time, the 30 day timelines and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, had, I had met with Joe Shea about a month ago mm -hmm. concerning that deductible and um, seeing if he could, he could lower that deductible at all. And he managed to get it down twenty dollars, which <clears throat> at the time he wasn't sure he could do because it would either be if we lower that deductible, we have to to raise um, the um, uh, another part of the plan. So mm -hmm. you know, six or one half a dozen the other. All right. uh, a relatively new organization, Rural Commonwealth, formed by two current and former select board members of Charlemont has just published a report on Western Franklin County business. The report is available on the website, but I am providing you with a little article from the reporter a couple trees published right online yesterday. Oh, good. Um, this is probably a better report than what was in the paper. Uh, you got uh, two, two there, don't you? No. You, you oh, have oh you something. gave him two. Oh, everybody's got one now. Okay. It's a report plus yeah. the article. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, it's a better report than the paper, right? It's good. Yeah, so there's an article um, that was online in the reporter, and then uh, good. the report itself, it covers a lot of issues that you'll see uh, are quite familiar. Broadband, uh, uh, wastewater treatment problems, um, you know, skill, uh, employee skills, all, all kinds of things that are mm -hmm. that really are common. So it's a great thing. This is uh, people who have been working on the Small Town Summit, uh, which is now within this organization, uh, Rural Commonwealth. Yes. So they're they're paying attention to what's going on Beacon Hill and uh, advocating for rural interests, making sure the information from Beacon Hill gets out to small towns. So this uh, this is I think really going to be a um, a useful enterprise. Hmm. That's good. Okay. So this, uh, this looks to me like it's, it's broadening out the small town summit that was basically Charlemont, yep. Buckland, right. Shelburne, right. yep. you know, to a lot of other communities in Massachusetts that have the same issues. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next item, concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? No concern. Oh, 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 wait oh, a second, oh, you have a concern? Oh, 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 oh. What, what's your Has concern? Been taking care, well, I guess, uh, by, by, did I hear right that the uh, little bit of Dombo over the Rag Shag Parade in the town hall been taken care of today? With Heidi? The lady auxiliary? I think um, you talked with Heidi about I that. did talk with her about what needs to happen, and I'm going to be making some phone calls tomorrow. Okay, to great. So set up. Everything's all set, because that's going to be in a couple yeah. weeks, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything's done. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, mail. Let's see what we got in the mail. <clears throat> okay, we have, uh, I think we had this as of last meeting, uh, next uh, uh, Tuesday the 24th at 6 p.m., is um, a meeting of the Frontier Regional High School um, Committee. And we're invited to that. Unfortunately, I can't make that meeting. What time is it? That's 6 o'clock on the 24th. Uh, also on the 26th, there is a Cooperative Health, Public Health Service annual meeting uh, up at uh, Shelburne Falls Eagle Club at 52 State Street in Shelburne Falls from 5.30 to 8.30 on Thursday the 26th. Yeah. Um, selectmen are invited and uh, I'm sure that 
Tom is invited as well. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. And uh, dinner is free to you and a guest. There's an RSVP on here uh, if anybody wants a, a copy of that. I know, I got a copy. I don't know if you... you yeah, we all got Yeah, yeah, we, we, all, yeah. we all got, you. We all got yeah. copies. Um, we got a very nice thank you, a note from uh, Jane Recor about uh, cable that was across her driveway, and I'm sure that so, Bob did the work on that to get that cable uh, But removed. I hadn't communicated with her directly to make sure she's happy, so... Well, so okay. That, then you should look at this, because great. this is the result of your work on that. I understand that the people in Roaring Brook and Cricket Hill have already been notified by door-to-door -door by Comcast offering the plan set up. Uh, uh, yes, with no data as to exactly when it's going to be. But to have them be able to start thinking about what plan they would want to purchase. And I was out to a fire call yesterday in East Skinny Road and we ran into the Verizon trucks out there putting new poles in and getting ready for Comcast out there. That's great. So, uh, things are in the works. Excellent, excellent news. Um, okay, uh, Tom provided us with um, the latest version off the presses of the open meeting law guide from uh, Attorney General Maura Healy, just printed on October the 6th. So just 10 short days ago, and we have a fresh copy of it. Lisa's diligence yes. provided that. Thank you, Lisa. This is great. I'm glad that she's happy. Yeah. Um, okay, the only other thing we have on the agenda is the um, next meeting scheduled for Monday, October 30th at eight, the town. Eight, eight. We may be meeting on the 19th with the assessors at um, 5.30. Right. Okay. As a continuation of the hearing, but... But the next, of, yeah. the next meeting of the... Um, the board, regular meeting of the board would be on the 30th. Now, um, do we want to meet here in the town office and then go over to the town meeting? Or do we want to meet over there? I, I think meeting here has some advantages. It's been a little chaotic over there. All right, we'll, okay, we'll meet here what at time? six o'clock. Let's just keep the agenda short yeah. so we can get over there in plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. Which day? That's, that's uh, 30. 30, 30. Two weeks 90, from no, today. Two weeks before Halloween. Oh, I see, yeah. We don't, we don't have to come in, in costume. Costume. Oh. oh. <laughs> Someday. All right. Is, is there any other business to come before the board? No? If not, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Thank you Lisa. Thanks.